that. Sure. But if you really want to get into that stuff, there is like I think there's like a brown cover is the first edition. That's the one that like you know you could buy a house with. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> What's up, Internet? Nick Lacapo here with Penguin Magic, and we are back for another top 10 list with my friend Eric Tate. Eric, what's going on, man? Hey, Nick. How you doing? Pretty good. You know, we, uh, we, we reached out to the millions of Penguin Magic <laughs> viewers out there, uh, and we said, hey, we're going to talk with Eric. What do you want to know about? And overwhelmingly, the entire world was like, Eric, we want to know your top 10 magic books that don't have any tricks in it, <laughs> right? That's what they wanted to know, and that's what we're going to give the people out there. Well, you know, I think that if there's anything that we can do with more of in this world, it's magic books that don't have any it's magic true. tricks. It's very true. I don't want no more <laughs> tricks. No yeah. more tricks. Why, should, uh, what, why, why is this an important list, though? No, I think it's an important list because there's, uh, there are a million books of magic tricks, right? Mm -hmm. But there's not a lot of books out there that feature, like, sort of the philosophy of magic, performance of magic, and mm -hmm. some of them are just important historical texts. Yeah. I think where it's like, uh, I, actually there's a there's a book in this list uh, that I'm going to share with you guys that actually directly contributed to me winning a competition because I was able to like go back in and go, oh, this is how they actually like did the real work and that contributed to when uh, I took first prize in a, in a, in a con competition. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, over, but there's also some stuff where it's like, hey, maybe it's just a book of techniques. Mm -hmm. Because there's a couple of books in here that aren't necessarily magic books, but they are books of techniques that I've also used mm -hmm. uh, to do stuff. And mostly this list is just a way for me to show off books in my library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just sitting on all these books. Nobody yeah. knows. Yeah, you just got them there. No, yeah. these types of books are really important. If yeah. you're working on the right thing and the right book comes across your lap, can really unlock oh, yeah. doors that you didn't know existed. Yeah, and, um, we've got, and uh, we actually we brought in the weird table because I've got some of the books we have here, so mm -hmm. we can actually show them so people can see the cover and like the authors and what they can get at. Perfect. Like that. Yeah. Well, before we look at them, make sure that you uh, guys leave us some comments below on the books that you've read that uh, don't have any tricks on them. Although we all love magic trick books as well, but yeah. uh, see what you relate to. Let us know what you think about some of these as well yeah. as we go through. Give us number 10 though. Uh, number 10, uh, okay, so this is gonna start off actually in one of those books that is largely techniques but not tricks. Uh, and it is the fantastic The Art of Switching Decks by Roberto Giobbi. Oh. It's, Any, yeah. it's super good. Yes. Uh, the, I know that when I was creating a couple of shows, and actually the, the show that I do when I perform at the Magic Castle or the Chicago Magic Lounge, there's stuff in this book that made it into that show. There's not a single trick in this book. It's all different ways on how to switch decks. Mm -hmm. and if, as a matter of fact, the only thing in the book that is like really a trick is there's a DVD that comes with it of a lecture that Joby gave where he does like eight or nine tricks in a row. Yeah. And what you find out in the at the end of it is that over the course of the performance, he switches decks like 23 times. It's it's nuts. <laughs> well, I think the other thing that I would want to uh, show to people here uh, oh, with R Roberto, yeah. if you've never actually looked at anything that Roberto has ever published, he is one of the most. I mean, he's got to be one of the best. Uh, magic authors. He's so period, thoughtful in in our in our art. In when when I write up new sets of lecture notes and uh, and anything that I'm going to put out there, I often refer to his nomenclature because yes. it's so uh, it's so yeah, pervasive just, in our community. Just just look at the inside. You'll find this in almost any Roberto book. The inside just gives you the map of the deck of cards in the hands. Map of it. It's so it's so important. Yeah, so, it, this is, this stuff is just it's gold. Yeah. anything that he does is amazing. Yeah, okay. it's, it's almost like I wish that if I if I was going to write a magic book, I would almost want to license that image to put in there because it's yeah, such know. a valuable thing. Yeah, he's really kind of like just done a lot of the groundwork for a lot of people when yeah. it comes to this type of thing. Uh, we we yeah. owe a lot to Roberto the and all of his stuff. Beautiful photographs yeah, in here so. that are like high contrast black and white so you can see everything. Like yeah. uh, full color photographs are great, but uh, with these you would know exactly what's going on. And in this, in the back, there's a table uh, where he, just, oh, yeah, he, yeah. he breaks down every switch in the book and all of the scenarios and See, what's needed. That's the stuff that he does that yeah. like, it's just like goes above and beyond, yeah. right? Like where all this stuff is, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, this is a fantastic book, it's, right? It's so good. And it goes beyond switching decks, yeah. really. Right? I mean, really, if, if, uh, if the, if this wasn't requirement of no tricks in the book, I would have put basically, this would have been a list of like eight to one of card college, card college, <laughs> yeah. light, artist switching decks. Yeah, right. 
it's it's a really great book. No, this is fantastic. I can't yeah. believe this is ten because uh, yeah. I have no idea where this whole list is going. It's, so. it's only ten because it's so close to having tricks in it. So close. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, then let's so let's go to let's go to number nine. Number nine, uh, definitely one of my favorite books to read. Uh, this is a hard one to get a hold of, uh, but it's well worth it. And that is Ricky Jay's Learned Pigs and Fireproof Women. That's right. man. I've actually never seen a copy. Have you never seen a copy of this? No, I know all about it, but I've never seen. Uh, I've actually never sat. I'm sitting next to one right now. Uh, Learned Pigs and Fireproof. So Ricky Jay, uh, who we unfortunately lost last year as of this taping, uh, was an amazing historian of magic and sideshow and vaudeville and allied arts. And this particular book is out of print now, mm -hmm. uh, so it's very, very hard to come across. But if you can come across it, uh, there are you know, the Learned Pigs is really great because it talks about uh, uh, pigs that could apparently do math that were being secretly signaled. There's uh, magicians in here who don't have arms or legs. Uh, uh, all kinds of different like sideshow art. It's well, it says on the front: stone eaters, mind readers, poison resistors, daredevils, singing mice, etc., 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 etc. It's an amazing history of the of allied arts and magic and sideshow and and some important people. I think Le Petitmont, the the guy who performed for the French court with just farts, is in here. Uh, I mean, it's just right. Like, I mean, and, and Ricky's just such an amazing writer. Uh, yes, it, it's it's a great book that. It's an important book in magic, but also there's not a single trick in the whole uh, whole book. Oh, oh thank God! <laughs> no, no, uh, this is uh, yeah. I, this, I'm already I'm looking through here. I've yeah. never seen this book. I'm I, I I I'm gonna put this over here. Yeah, I know that this is this is one of those books <laughs> no, that you're gonna no, steal no. from me. Yeah, no, we're gonna leave that one out. Yeah. Uh, thank you for bringing that. That's oh, cool. Yeah. Let's go to number eight. Number eight uh, is a mutual friend of ours wrote this book, and I think it was one of the most important books that came out that year for mentalism. We have friends that can write? Uh, yeah. Uh, it is Andy Luttrell. Oh, wow. Uh, Andy Another book I've actually never seen but heard about. Uh, so Andy Luttrell, so f uh, full disclosure, uh, Andy Luttrell is a very good friend of mine, and I know yours. Uh, he's, uh, he's a comedian who is based here in Columbus, but he's also a clinical psychologist. He actually right. does studies. He's been on NPR for yeah. some of his studies. Uh, but Andy is also, um, I'm assuming, a fantastic mentalist because never he's seen never him. performed a trick Yeah, if you, if you ever watch any Penguin Live lectures, yeah. he's pro he's at every one of them. And he's, you've probably seen this guy yeah. in, any, uh, in any of those clips. Yeah. Andy and I have had really deep, wide-ranging discussions on magic and mentalism and their, uh, uh, and their different ideas. And... Uh, I remember he sent me an early draft of this and said, Eric, what do you think of this? Because I had, uh, back when I was originally in college, I, I went to school for psychology and cognitive psychology, and I was starting to try and figure out how to apply different clinical uh, psychological applications to magic uh, phenomenon. And Andy actually did the work because Andy actually is a psychologist. And then he uh, shared an early draft with me. I really liked it and said, you should continue going forward with this. And then he went to Patrick Redford, who is a monster of mentalism, and Patrick helped him publish this book. Mm. Uh, and uh, it is, it's phenomenal. If you're not a, men, uh, a mentalist and you're, you're just doing magic, this is a really great book. So you can understand how things happen in the brain, why things happen in the brain. He talks yeah. about different misdirection, different principles and psychological forces. Such a good book. Yeah, I'm just flipping through it and just all the little titles that I'm seeing, like nonverbal tells, metacognition, right? Oh, yeah. Memory, demonstrating false memory. These are all things that, like, man, yeah. linguistic styles, judgment. Oh, man, what is this? Yeah. Table of contents. Oh, you got it signed, too. Oh, of course, of course I got it signed. calls you champ? Okay. Yep. Okay, keep your head in the game, champ. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I know that Andy's a really smart guy. I'm yeah. really excited to... Uh, Look at this one, too. You're not yeah. going to have any books left by the end of this video. Yeah. Knowing, knowing how well uh, Andy performs as a stand-up com uh, stand comic uh, and, and reading the things that are going in here, you're, you're, he's approaching this book with a deep background as a very strong performer and a very strong psychologist. Yeah, I've seen him. Do, that's about the only thing I've seen him do is yeah. a stand-up comedy act. And uh, he's all, yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this is... This is a cool choice because I'm yeah. sure this is super under the radar for all magicians. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm sure that this is probably a phenomenal book. I'm pretty sure it's available on penguinmagic.com. If it's not, I know Patrick Redford sells it on his website. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, so that would put us at 10, 9, 8, 7. 7. Yes. Number 7. So unfortunately, I, I don't have 7 here because okay. I, when we were coming in, I actually left it on my bedside table because I'm reading it. I'm actually rereading it now. It's Shattering Illusions by Jamie Ian Swiss. Okay, yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. So Shattering Illusions was a series of essays that Jamie Ian Swiss, uh, who is a phenomenal magician and a phenomenal writer, so good. Uh, he uh, wrote for the LA Times. 
and mm -hmm. then he collected them into a, uh, a uh, it collected these essays into a book, and then there was been a reprint recently that was done where he then went back and annotated the original essays with further updates because it was printed like 10, 15 years ago. And it's, uh, it's a really interesting book that talks about like, it's okay if someone finds out how a trick works. So these, these essays are about magic specifically? They're about magic specifically, about the performance of magic. Uh, it's, and it really sort of opened my eyes the first time I read it because uh, there are a lot of things that we take as magicians and we say, this is the way it needs to be, and Jamie challenges those notions. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, it, because the book was written so long ago, there's a very early um, uh, discussion of uh, magic on the internet. Uh, learning magic via video versus books. Uh, there's a very controversial essay in there on the mass magician and how everyone <laughs> needs to just cool their jets. Sure. Uh, it's, it's a really um, subversive. Is Probably very interesting to read now that we're so far removed from it as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, he's done a really good job in the reprint, uh, which I know is available at penguinmagic.com, uh, of going back and sort of reevaluating his stances and mm -hmm. then writing... Uh, uh, further, sh I, th I can't remember exactly what it is in the book, but it, it's, uh, it's further thoughts on the subject. And, and in some cases he says, you know what, I was wrong. And in other cases he says, oh, I didn't go far enough. And in other cases he goes, but here are additional thoughts. It's, it's really interesting. D Jamie is a very deep thinker mm -hmm. in our art. And, to, and he deals with a lot of subjects that are not just how to perform a trick, or, but why to perform a trick. And also uh, societal and cultural things that we need to deal with. As a, as a group with how we teach, uh, how we uh, uh, perform on different mediums. It's mm -hmm. a really fascinating book. He was an amazing performer to get to know when uh, he came here to do yeah. his Penguin Live lecture. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm already sold on this, on this list. I have no idea where this is going. Mm -hmm. I have my own non-magic books. Oh yeah? But like, I already know, I'm because uh, I'm, I get addicted to these things. Oh yeah. So I know that I'm screwed here because there's going to be <laughs> six or seven more books here that I'm going to need to read. Uh, yeah. We're at number six? Yeah, we're at number six. Uh, All right, give is, it to me. What do you got? So this is the book that I referenced that helped me win uh, an award. It was every year at the Magic Castle, there is a night called the Soapy Smith Night, and they mm -hmm. have a short con contest. So everyone who comes in is given like a little bit of like fake money, and then you have to go and right. try and use Fast and Lose, Three Card Monty, and the Shell Game to so steal money right, from people. That's right. And one year, I beat Whit Hayden's student in first place. That's right. We were just talking about this the other night, weren't we? Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, we, we were talking with Doc Hilford about it. Yeah, this. we were. Okay, uh, right. And the book that I referenced the most was from Simon Lovell. Oh. It is Billion Dollar Bunko. This book, I do know. So this is a great book. Now, the nice thing is, so Billion Dollar Bunko is out of print, but... It was reprinted as How to Cheat at Everything. Yeah. And I believe you can get it at Penguin, but if not, it's available in bookstores Just go nationwide. Go to the airport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I think it's, it's, it's there. It's, it's, I remember when this came out, I was a huge Simon Lovell fan at the time. And this book has, uh, it's got chapters on, oh, on card cheating, but bar What's the bets. name of the character? Um, uh, it is. Uh, it's oh, written as if. Uh, Simon is interviewing uh, a no, third. No, they're, tell, yeah, they're telling the story of some cheat. Freddy, whole, Freddy the Fox. Freddy the Fox. Yeah. Freddy and, uh, the Fox. There's a Forward by Todd Robbins and Wesley James. Freddie the Fox is in here. Uh, there are some. Uh, there's cheating at cards stuff, but uh, like. Well, they go into uh, carnival games. Oh yeah. How they work. Uh, yeah. There's uh, cheating with dice. Uh, really sneaky ways to beat the system with like postage scams. Don't do anything <laughs> in this book. Uh, I learned a lot of, of, of really obscure three card Monty stuff in here. Okay, so you use something from this book to, yes, uh, to do three card Monty in the in the scams and cons. But there is uh, there's stuff in here on how to cheat at uh, uh, backgammon. Yeah, you know when you're going to need to cheat at backgammon. Yeah, all the time. But yeah. it's you know because Simon Lovell wrote it, and Simon has worked with like the FBI and uh, the and and the NYPD on how to like spot uh, uh, cons and cheats on on the road. He worked in, in crooked carnivals. There, even though it's written a, from the perspective and about a third person character who is fictitious. There's a lot of Simon bringing his real life uh, efforts in, yeah, here. and he's made right. some really, uh, really excellent like uh, sort of dissections of the individual games. Yeah, if you don't know, I mean, uh, Simon Live, Simon Level Live, the Penguin Live lecture, it, it, uh, you yeah. can see. <laughs> He knows his stuff. You know, if you, if you were to get this book and you and you watch it, you'd be like, oh, I, to I totally get it, yeah. right? And uh, also there's a, it used to be, a, I think it was a TNT show called White Collar. Uh, it was about like a, like a gentleman grifter, white collar criminal. He would like steal art and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it was a crime procedural, but about like, 
you know, cons and scams. And yeah. Simon was the uh, was the was a creative consultant for it, or the, or the scam consultant for it. And there's a bunch of stuff in here that ends up showing up in white. Collar. There's nothing. There's no scams that exist that's not in here. No, I mean they're all in here. This is the Bible. Yeah. Uh, the jam auction. Jam auctions are so fascinating. Oh, man. And you find out more, more about those. Just yeah. Really there, there have been some times when I was down on my luck in my life, and I was like, I, I was looking through this book, going, should I? I didn't. This but. is this is one of those. It doesn't matter. You go to any page. And you're gonna find something. You're cool. gonna find something cool. Sp yeah. Spooking, uh, accidental cheating, yeah. uh, assorted petty hustles. Yeah. You know, just a, a, a giant tome of some of the craziest, coolest scams and bets. And it's super cool. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Book. yeah. And again, if you if you can't find this, it's been reprinted yeah. as right. how to cheat at everything, how and it's the everything. same text. Yeah. It's just a paperback. And version. it's not. Yeah. It's not this it's giant, small. giant thing. It's easier to throw in your back when you're on the in Man, your backpack when you're on the road. That's number six. Yeah. Yeah, because number five is also cheating. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's a little harder to lay your hands on. You're not going to find it on Penguin. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the Big Green Book. The Big Green Book. Stephen Forty's Casino Game Protection. Oh man. Yeah. I, you, there it is. You can hear the camera guy gasping in the background. <laughs> That's why you drove your pickup truck here today, right? You had yeah. to bring this thing with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh man. This is one of my favorite books. Uh, so Steve Forty, if you're not familiar with him, is the guy. The when guy. it comes to casino stuff, yep. Uh, you can you can look up the casino protection tapes, which uh, have been re uh, put out on DVD. Uh, this was this was not written for magicians, but it's interesting. So Sal Piacente, friend of ours, and yeah. uh, has done some great stuff here. Uh, Sal and I were talking about this, and he's a good friend of Steve's, and he he asked Steve uh, how the the book went, how the casino industry uh, received it, because this book was written for casino executives to know what was possible. Mm. And S Steve let slip that, uh, or not let slip, but he told Sal, and then Sal told me, that most of these copies are in the hands of magicians, uh, which is interesting, <laughs> because this is really, this is not written for magicians. This no. is written for, uh, for, for actual casino protection. Sure. I have, I've learned some moves from here. Uh, uh, just by the way the photographs are and the way Steve describes them, but it's definitely not for that. But what's really fascinating about this book is he goes into dice scams, he goes into advantage play in poker and blackjack, he goes into uh, different types of stacking systems, oh, man. Uh, cheating at roulette. Uh, uh, I've actually never looked in here, so it's, yeah. It's an amazing book with beautiful photographs, tables. It's, I mean, it's everything you could want to know. And even now, I mean, this book is almost over a decade old at this point. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, even even then, there's stuff in here that's obsolete now, mm. uh, because there was a lot of stuff that was cutting edge. Well, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, just just these headings alone in the table of contents: card counting, advantage play, craps, roulette, baccarat, Asian games, poker, universal scams, yep. detection. You know, all, it, what's not in here? If you wanted to learn moves like uh, like gambling moves, Steve has a new uh, set of books out, and I believe at the time he's doing a reprint uh, that's uh, uh, yeah, four, it, forty it, years okay. uh, of research, and that is actually an instructional book to teach you the moves. This is not an instructional book, but it is fascinating to get inside uh, the head of someone like Steve Forty. Yeah, I'm just looking at some uh, some domino sleight of hand here. Yeah, I mean, like, oh man. Yeah, I mean, if you were a magician, there are some things you could definitely take away from this book. Uh, and actually, you're on a page right now. This is a fascinating page. So this this uh, gambling shoe right here is actually Jason England showed me a physical copy of this. You can listen to it in uh, in uh, the episode of the Penguin Magic podcast with Jason England. It's a sh it's a shoe that will allow you to peek the second card, but from the back. It's really yeah, wild. Yeah, there's like a little peek of a card there, which yeah. is wild. Yeah. What a cool book. Oh, super duper cool what book. What a cool it's, book. It's been on my shelf for years, and, and it's something I, I, I leaf through often. Yeah, Casino Game Protection, number five. Yep. And uh, man, it's gonna be, uh, we got a long way to go here. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if it's that good at five, what? I have no idea what number one is going to be, but what's number four? Uh, number four, I don't have it with me because it is currently on loan to one of my students, but I think it might be one of the more important texts that has ever been written for casual magicians, and that is The Expert at the Kitchen Table by Andy Jerksman. Oh, man. The jerks. The jerks. The jerks. We, uh, I think we love the jerks we, here at uh, Penguin. Everyone here at the P3 Studios is a big fan of the yeah. jerks. Yeah. And I think what is, you know, I, and I could have, I could have put all of his other books on a list like this, but they've got too much magic for a list like this. But The Amateur of the Kitchen Table has no tricks in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is all about the amateur magician mm -hmm. and performing as an amateur. Because I think a lot of times 
we approach magic, at least I know you and I approach it as professionals a lot. We're thinking about what we're going to do in that show. We're thinking about how it's going to work. What's the reset? Mm -hmm. And Andy talks a lot in that about creating very special moments. Yeah. And it, using methods that would not be accessible or even palatable to a pro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess we should probably just say, you should probably, if you've never heard of this guy, yeah. his website is thejerks.com, J-E-R-X? Yeah, J-E-R-X. And, yeah, J -E -R -X. and it, it's, <laughs> J -E -R -X. you know, it's, he's one of those guys who is like, he's actively trying to reduce the readership of the blog. Okay, don't go to his website. No. Yeah, no. But it's <laughs> it's one of those things that if you're never going to be a pro, you should read his, his One stuff. of the best writers that we've seen in a long time so within good. the world of magic, and he writes constantly about this topic specifically. Yeah on his blog. I don't think that there is any other resource for amateur magicians in yeah, the way that right. the jerks writes. And I believe he still sells this book because it's a small pamphlet. Mm -hmm. It's not big and thick, but it definitely it definitely changed the way I looked at the way I perform magic a lot. Mm. It's it's really really good. Yeah, no, I I'm, I'm glad you brought that one up cuz mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's it's de it definitely it definitely does belong along stuff like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? For yeah. sure. Uh, so that's four. Four. Three. Three. Uh, this one's a little bit of a cheat because there is some magic in it. But Get it's, it out of it's here. More, I don't want to see it. It's more important because of the way it approaches magic, and that is The Magic Way by okay. Ron Tamarins. All right, never mind. It can stay. It's, uh, <laughs> there, you know, he uses, there is some, there are some tricks in here. Well, he uses them as illustration. Yeah, yeah. And, but the, the, the tricks are... I think he even says in the book that the, some of the tricks that he is teaching you are not tricks that you should not do it this way. But this is a way to approach what he refers to as his philosophy of magic as the magic way. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a little bit more condensed than Magic Rainbow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit easier to read. Magic Rainbow is pretty, pretty dense. Yeah. Uh, which is why I put this in here instead of the rainbow. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I think the rainbow got like a lot of, when it finally got published in English recently, it because got a lot of hype. Yeah. You know, we all, I, I, I would like to think a lot of us know or at least heard of Juan Tamarese at mm -hmm. this point. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, the method of false solutions and the magic way. Yeah. What could that possibly mean, Eric? It's, uh, it's a way of approaching magic of giving people an opportunity to try and figure out how the trick works and then closing those doors until they have nowhere to go. Yeah. And, and I think that's the most important thing that he talks about here. And he illustrates it with, I think he does, teaches like 10 or 11 different versions of oil and water in here. Right, I was going to say, this is the oil and water book, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. This is the oil and water book. And so you're learning oil and water, but you're not really learning oil and water. Specifically, you're learning oil and water in order to understand his philosophy of the magic way. So it does have magic tricks in here, but he even says that these are not magic. Yeah, it, it's, it's simply to get his point across. Yeah. It looks like he talks about ambitious card mm -hmm. and oil and water, basically. Yeah, um, and, and it's, it's, that, it's that idea of false solutions, so that if, uh, uh, as, a, as, a prof as a, an audience member is watching your effect, they start to grab onto a solution, and then you yank that solution out from underneath them in order to further the moment of astonishment mm -hmm. and, and deepen the mystery. And it's it's a really interesting way of looking at magic. Yeah, and I, I actually I remember his Penguin Live lecture number one as well. He mm -hmm. actually threw a lot of this type of stuff at you, a lot of these charts yeah. and things that we're talking about here. Uh, this is a. It, I would say this is probably, if you want to get into some of Tamarys' stuff, this is a, probably a great place to start. You should definitely start here because Mnemonica is a very different style of book. Where oh, a totally different it's, style it's, of it's book. It's focused on that. Sonata is, Sonata is great. It's got some really wonderful magic in it, but it's, uh, it, it's difficult to approach unless you understand some of Tamarys' stuff because he's also trying to teach a magical, short, like a short writing shorthand in it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not as... Uh, it, it, it covers a bunch of different stuff. Whereas this, like you start to understand how one thinks and why he wants you to think the way he does. So even though they were written sort of one, two, three, you should really sort of go at them as three, one, yeah, two. Yeah, I got, you know, like we were talking about this at the beginning where mm. it's sometimes these books like come come across your plate at the right time. Yeah. You know, Tamar is is a rabbit hole yeah. that you can go down and mm -hmm. you can learn a lot from. It's almost yeah. like getting into Bob Dylan or something like that, yeah. you know, like yeah. it, it, it might not be your thing right now but at some point in the future well one day you'll pick this up yeah. and it's going to be over if you've not explored this this style yeah. it's a whole nother world that you didn't even know existed yeah. uh this and, is and such a good book it's also one of those books that you can read over and over again and gain different stuff from it every time you read yeah it over and over yeah ab absolutely yeah absolutely yeah is that, is that the only tamara's book on this list that, uh because the restriction was oh, the book, there was okay. no tricks Fair that enough. is the only tamara's uh on the uh, this book although i did come very close to putting the five points on here right. but he does cover the five points a little bit yeah in it's so kind it's of fun. the some overlap right yeah yeah, yeah. 
All right, we're at two? We are at two. Oh, uh, man. And uh, I, I think that a lot of people are not going to be surprised that this particular... Oh, I don't have it with me. Oh, no. No, I don't have it with me. Uh, this is Darwin Ortiz's Strong Magic. Uh, I was hoping you were going to say this yeah, one. It's, yes. it's a really good book that oh. covers a lot of really wonderful information about how to make your magic strong. Yes. And uh, I, an honorable mention should be given to Designing Miracles. Sure. But I... Whether or not this is the way I should say it, I feel like Strong Magic and Designing Miracles are one book that were just published separately. Yeah, uh, no, I can agree to that. Because yeah, yeah. Strong Magic, you really understand about wh what makes magic strong and the approach to making uh, your magic strong, whereas Designing Miracles is more the nuts and bolts of taking the philosophy of Strong Magic and then applying it to the construction of the tricks. Yeah, I think you put that well right yeah. there. Yeah, if, 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 you've, if you've never read like a theory-based book, uh, this is probably the one that's going re to relate to the most people. It, it's not only going to relate to the most people, it's also one that is easier to grasp. Yeah. Because the, the wand stuff can get a little, uh, a little difficult yeah. because A, the theory is, is very sort of up here in woo-woo-y and it's a translation mm -hmm. as opposed to Darwin who is writing in English and writing uh, at a... I don't want to say a lower level is not the way to put it, but he is aiming it to be as accessible as possible. Yeah. And Darwin is very good at making it accessible. Yeah, I guess I guess a good way to put it is yeah. somewhere between Giobi and Tamaris. Yeah. Right? It's, because Giobi is really just demonstrating things on a, a technical, like, yes. this is why it works and how you do it, like, and it's yeah. so good at it. Yeah. Darwin's like, giving you, a, a, like, an opinion on things. Yeah. Uh, it's more like a graduate level course. For me, personally, that, that would be my number one. Yeah. It would be Strong Magic uh, mm -hmm. out of the bait here. Because when I was doing my show at Universal Studios, mm -hmm. that was one of those things, any page, open to any page, yeah. I could read something on that page that I could then take to my show that day yes. and try. Yeah. Right? There's just so many golden nuggets in that book. Yeah. Fantastic book. Yep. And that brings me to my number one. Um, I'm sad to hear it, but tell, tell, tell I mean, me what you I mean, I, I could have made this list 25 books long. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got a bigger library than this, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. This is, uh, we'll, we'll do more of these. We'll do so 20 can... through 10 next time. Okay, <laughs> give us number one. <laughs> uh, number one is one of the very first books I read on magic theory. It's mm -hmm. stuck with me to this day. There are, it is a bit of a cheat because there are a couple of tricks with it, but All I right, think we'll forgive you. It, is, it is one of the most influential books that I've ever read, and uh, I think it is... Absolute Magic by Darren Brown. Oh, wow. The, uh, you know, can I touch it? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's my retirement book right there. <laughs> oh, man. I've actually never seen a copy, so yeah. Oh, have you not? No. Oh, no. man. Oh, this is, this is a really good book uh, because this was written following Pure Effect, which mm -hmm. Pure Effect, he started to touch on his theory, but he really, uh, he had a lot of different effects that he was done with in Pure Effect, whereas Absolute Magic... He is really approaching this from here is why I do this. Here are things that make the magic stronger. Here's why I'm doing this in mentalism and why I'm not involving magic or why I'm involving a little bit of magic. It's, mm. it's a super duper good book. Yeah. Um, now you said there's a couple tricks in here. I was going to say, is this the yeah. one with the, 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 um, the cigarette in it? No, the, cig the cigarette, uh, smoke, the trick smoke is in, uh, mm. is in pure effect. Okay. Pure effect. Pure right. effect also has the, the coin one where you have somebody reach into their pocket, pull out the largest coin, and then you know the date and it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, this is this is mostly a book of theory and uh, and some shots at Guy Hollingsworth. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's yeah, a, it's no a, pictures. No, it's just all text, uh, and he really dives into it. And I I don't know if Andy Nyman was involved in writing this book. I have to imagine that Andy Nyman had a hand in this. But this was definitely like the team that sort of created the Darren Brown that we know today. Like, this is a really good insight into where they were back when he was sort of at, like, the height of popular. I mean, not that he's ever really backed off of being at the height of popular. No, he was right but sort of when he was just, like, you know, all, like, just everywhere and in your face. This was a really interesting book to read uh, regarding that. I mean, he, to, to me, he's one of the most prolific performers that we have. Yeah. And, uh, to be able to get any insight into what he might have been thinking... Uh, back then must be I've not read this book so. well you know what's also interesting is that this in in the the subtitle of this book is a model for powerful close-up performance which, right which is really interesting because what a lot of people don't really realize is that Darren got his background in performing close-up in like mm -hmm. the, in the really fantastic restaurant scene and and, and uh, in England and so when you have a lot of books like uh, the magic way and strong magic that are very focused on on 
magic overall, and then also magic in like a in what we would think of as like a stage format. Because I really, th I, you know, I I think of a lot of these magicians as like sort of these grand performers. This is very specific on close-up magic, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of like books on theory that focus in on close-up magic, which is what most of us really do. Yeah, yeah, for I, sure. I mean, you know, you and I are more stage performers these days because of the way our careers have gotten, but. You know, ten years ago, I didn't have any stage tricks mm. in my act, and no. so it was very, it was very important to sort of learn a lot of these concepts early on. Mm -hmm. No, so well, that right there, number one. And this is a, this is a bit hard to track down, or is that the pure effect? Well, I think they're both are. Right? They're both hard to track down. Uh, I think this is a second edition, so it's a little bit easier to track down because they did do more. You know, there's like it's the reason why I haven't read it. <laughs> yeah, if you if you get into if you want to get into sort of like I. I Admittedly, this is a bit of a show off here. There's definitely books that are out of print here, difficult to get. Sure. But if you really want to get into that stuff, there is like, I think there's like a brown cover is the first edition. That's the one that like, you know, you could buy a house with. Yeah, right, uh, right. But, but these, but yeah, the book is hard to track down, but it's, it's definitely out there and you can get it and uh, it's, it's worth the read. Well, killer list. Thank you. Killer list. Uh, and th thank you guys for watching. If you have any suggestions, well, I want to know what, I need more books to read. So if you have any books as well that you like that have to do with magic theory and the performance yeah. of magic, please let us know down below. Uh, and if you just like the video, just give us a thumbs up. That would help both of us out. For Appreciate me, it. Eric, Penguin Magic, thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>